I, I, we are so abundant in our music program. The, the musicians, the soloists, our music minister, thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Alice Reed, and I'm so happy to be with you here this morning. We are, um, I want to start with thank you and gratitude, because so many of you have stepped up. You have filled out your committed giving cards. I have put your picture up on a star in the universe of our community here. And so I want to thank you all for your generosity and your contributions. And I want to let you know that if you haven't completed a committed giving card, there's still time. Uh, we'd be happy to receive your commitment. We're asking everybody to recommit this year. Next year, our budget situation is changing a little bit. We've had a bequest that's going to be cut in half. And so we'd like to know what your commitment is for 2025. It'll help Rick out a lot. That's Rick Terrazano, our treasurer. <laughs> Not necessarily Rick Dale. <laughs> Thank you. And um, as I have been t saying all month in the month of October that, um, you know, if you give us a little more bread, I'll bake you bread. And so I'm asking if anyone who wants to commit 15% more than what they've given in past years, I'll bake you a loaf of bread. So thank you again for your generosity. And um, our red, our thermometer went way up last week, so I'm very grateful for that. Every month we start with a new theme. And so as Reverend Karen shared with you, this month's theme is abundance. I don't have the hair for a bun, so I didn't wear a bun, and I wasn't going to dance for you. And no, we're not talking about dancing baked goods. <laughs> <laughs> Although my sister suggested we make croissant costumes and, and show up. I'm like, you could do that. <laughs> I don't think I will. Um, and of course, I was a little slow to the party when we started looking at the themes all year. You know, I'm like a bun dance. I wonder what that's going to be about. <laughs> And of course, if you squish those three words together, it spells abundance. And so we're going to be looking at abundance all uh, month. Uh, the, the Science of Mind magazine daily guides, uh, Dr. Jim Lockard is, is wrote the guides. You can get it online. Our delivery is late again, but you can get a digital copy. And he's writing about abundance all month. And the first three days were doozies. They were really great. The, um, the other thing, that, and of course today our topic is life is sweet, let it rise. And so, our typical greeting on a Sunday morning, grand rising. And so that is what we've been saying all year, grand rising. And that has so many levels of meaning for us, looking at 2024 being the year where we really step up and rise. The other thing that's, we got a lot going on today. <laughs> the other thing that's really wonderful is um, this is our homecoming Sunday. And so we have some folks we haven't seen for a little bit. We're grateful you've joined us this morning. And we're also, on our homecoming Sunday, we honor our legacy members. Those are the members that have been members of our community for uh, 25 years or more, a member of this community, Capistrano Valley. And so we have a, um, a lovely plaque that we keep on the wall. And it says, thank you for being part of our legacy that can, not, can I'm going to start over. <laughs> thank you for being part of our legacy that not only defines us, but also deepens our sense of belonging. And so as I call your name, existing legacy members, I'm going to ask you to stand. Reverend Karen Allen. Yeah. And let's hold our applause till everybody stands up. I know you all like the clap. Uh, <laughs> Carissa Allen. And Mary Brogdon. Gina Caruso. Reverend Judy Chapman. June Dixon. Joan Evans Fay. Bruce Friedenberg, Patrick Freeman, Joanne Grisafi, Barbara Klein Roebuck, Ken Roebuck, Winifred Libby, Estelle Perraud, Reverend Arpad Petras, Tony Sparks, Lisa Spinelli, 
Lee Van Slyke, Sandy Weaver, and Clark Wilson. Yay. And just remain standing for a moment because we have two new members of our legacy uh, to put on this beautiful legacy plaque. And uh, those names that will be added to this plaque are Grant and Rita McPhail, if you'll stand. <laughs> and then finally, I want to ask anybody who has been an active member of Centers for Spiritual Living for 25 years or more, you stand as well. Please. So thank you so much for your commitment to our community, to your commitment to this philosophy. Let's give everyone a hand. And now you can be seated. Thank you. Um, you know, leaving a legacy is really one way that we can rise as a community, to be that place where the community uh, welcomes new people who are interested in... Uh, uh, learning about this philosophy or where we can support each other in continuing to live the practices and the principles of the philosophy we teach. So life is indeed sweet. It's made sweeter through spiritual community. And sometimes we forget that, don't we? Sometimes we forget that life is sweet. Sometimes we get caught up in what's going on or distracted. Um, as Rick Dale, I've heard him say, the material world can be pretty persuasive. Persuasive. The material world can be pretty persuasive. And so w our work in this philosophy is to continue to rise up, to continue to see the bigger picture, to have this experience of abundance, it requires that we work at it. It requires that we tend to our mind and our hearts and the way we behave in the world. And yet, sometimes we forget. I actually had an experience of forgetting just yesterday where, um, you know, I will tell you during this entire election process, I have, I feel like I've been able to keep a pretty even keel. I've been respecting others' um, choices and um, the way they see their values um, showing up in the world. I've been, you know, I've entered in some dialogue with people just from a curiosity place, and they've been pretty successful. And um, yesterday I went ahead and I voted early. I went to the polls. I, it's been a while since I stood in a booth. I usually mail my, uh, my ballot in, and so, but this year I decided I, you know, I would go ahead and uh, stand in a booth and do my voting then, and hey, there was nobody there. And so I thought, you know, good citizen Alice, I'll tell my larger community, my neighborhood and uh, neighbors in San Juan Capistrano, hey, there's no line, you know, the, the polls are open. And I, so I posted that on our local social media site, and then people started posting how other people should vote. And I was, and I've like tried to say, well, that's not really what I why I posted this. I didn't post this so that we could, you know, promote our own personal, you know, uh, values. It was really kind of a public service announcement. And um, I just I it I got a little spun up about it. I really did. And and what I ended up doing was deleting my post, and backing away from it, and then stewing on it. <laughs> <laughs> I stewed, and I thought about it, and then I thought about it some more, and then I told somebody about it, and then I had other stressors that were going on in my day, and, and it was like a chain reaction, and I began to not feel good inside, and, um, and it took uh, picking up my beautiful sister from the airport and processing it a little bit with her for me to really let go of it, and... and uh, and come to a different place. And I, and I share that story and that experience with you because I had an experience of abundance. It was an abundance of worry. It was an abundance of stress. It was an abundance of not feeling good at all. It was an abundance of feeling kind of icky about not being able to connect with other people. I, you know, we as religious scientists and, and, and practitioners of this philosophy, we definitely have to pay attention to and cultivate 
the thoughts and the ideas, the things that come forward for us. Because what we, what we nurture, what we cultivate, what we continue to think about, the stories that we tell, the, the, the things that we say to each other, those are the things that are going to become, show up in our life. And, and if you're a practitioner like me, you get a pretty quick hit, right? You get to see what's happening and you can shift. Um, and if it's really a difficult situation, we have practitioners here that can help you with that. There's a, um, a great quote from Richard Rohr um, that I wanted to share with you this morning because this, this, I will call it the environment we are currently in. <laughs> <laughs> this environment that we are currently in can be a little bit challenging and it's important for us as practitioners of this philosophy to remember that it's all God, no exceptions. And that's pretty hard when we get angry with somebody or if somebody's doing something we don't want them to do or if we don't feel like we have control over things. But Richard Rohr reminds us in the kind of the area of loving our neighbor he says, we cannot attain the presence of God because we are already in the presence of God. What is absence is awareness. What is absent is awareness. We are always in the presence of God. Sometimes it hides from our perspective. It's not hiding. I'm, sometimes it hides from our perspective. Sometimes we can't see it until we pause and create that space of knowing the presence within ourselves. But it's important for us to recognize that that's our opportunity. <laughs> when we don't think we see God around us, when we don't see the presence of God, this is the opportunity for us to lean in and find that presence. Now, you might not... There's lots of things that happen in the world that I'm not a fan of. But at the end of the day, at the root, at the root, at the root of who we are as human beings, there is God in that. There is something that has, that has sparked in each individual as we move forward in the way that we show up in the world. We live in an abundant universe and we it's important for us to recognize that that abundance is forever coming forward for us. There's this great line that um, Jim Lockard used to open up the daily guides. He, f he simply put it this way, the creation of the universe contained within it everything necessary at the instant, the potential for everything that would be necessary for it, its continued existence and evolution. He has this beautiful way of saying that in the instant of creation, everything was created out of itself that we could possibly need. Everything. It's ours to reveal it. It's ours to raise our awareness to it. There is an abundance of potentiality and possibility that is available to us if we can make ourselves available to it. Like Richard Rohr said, there is... There is no place where God is not. We, the, the presence is not missing. Our awareness of it is missing. And so it's up to us to begin to cultivate that awareness. And one of the ways that I have seen people cultivate awareness in the abundance of what it is that they have is by being in service. Um, there's a great saying in the recovery circles, you have to give it away to keep it. And all that means is when you find that presence within yourself, it is, uh, the onus is on you to share that, to give it to someone else, to be available to someone else, to respond with love, to respond in principle, to be that place where you can see God no matter what. Now, I get it. There's a lot going on right now. And it, and there's some fear, and there's some anxiety, and there's some stress. And, you know, I definitely plugged into it yesterday. Sometimes I think <laughs> some of the experiences I have that might be difficult is just got spirit's way of giving me greater empathy and compassion, <laughs> right? 
so I can see you and I can see where you're at and I can understand better when you share something with me. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that, that ability to, to really be real with life and to recognize that I have agency because I'm a religious scientist and because I know how to work with my mind. I know how to cultivate my mind. I know how to use this philosophy to shift the way I am thinking or behaving or experiencing life. We've been studying Emma Curtis Hopkins as a practitioner core. And in the, in the tenth lesson, uh, Emma Curtis Hopkins uh, was one of Ernest Holmes' teachers and a uh, turn-of-the-century mystic, mystic and absolutist and brilliant. And so she reminds us of our perfect gift she quotes Paul as saying, every person has their proper gift of God. And she goes on to say that each of us has a particular achievement to accomplish. And when I read that, each of us has our, you know, we're all given this gift of God and each of us has our own uh, achievement to accomplish. At first, you know, my mind went to, um, was it my being a mother and a parent? Maybe it was the gift I give as a spiritual leader. But suddenly, it was like I was just dropped into a greater reality that the gift that we have all been given is the acknowledgement of the presence within ourselves. The acknowledgement of the presence of spirit in all of life. Do not discount that. Anything that comes from that is perfect. But when we drop into that deepest knowing that the presence of God lives within us, we can drop into that creative life force that created everything that could possibly be needed to express itself in however we choose to have it expressed. So in this day on November 3rd, when s much of our country in the U.S. is a little concerned about voting, where there are people who are really passionate about what seem like very diverse ideas, one of the things I'm going to encourage us to do is our spiritual practice. And we do our spiritual practice, the things that we offer, our affirmative prayer, affirmations. We have tools of meditation, taking classes, doing spiritual reading. But what I'm going to invite us to do is to give you the gift of prayer this morning. And so I'm going to invite our practitioners to come forward and to circle the stage so that we can do a prayer wall. And many of you who've been to our community in times before are familiar. Let's move down a little bit are familiar with this practice of a prayer wall. What this is, is we are going to give you the gift of a prayer. And so I encourage you to come forward to any one of our ministers and practitioners and receive a spiritual mind treatment. And so if you, John, if you would go ahead and play, come on forward and uh, receive the gift of prayer. Perfect, perfect calm. Because there's only God, and God is infinite, and God is all-knowing and all-peace and all-presence, I know that that is true of me and it's true of Alice. At the core of her being is that smooth, placid, perfect peace, that perfect tranquility, that perfect calm that no earthly storm can disturb. And in spite of all that may be swirling around her in this world of noise and confusion, there is a thing that is never confused, that is always whole, that is always complete, that is always absolutely peaceful and serene. And I thank God for this, God within. And I 
placed these words into that self-same power that has forever said, yes, it is true. It is so. It is real. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you. And so let's together end the way we end every spiritual mind treatment and affirmative prayer by saying, and so it is. Thank you, everyone. Wonderful.